These are all paddlefish, or a lot of them, but there's a tree down there. And 60 feet of water, you can see it right there. What's going on guys? This is Mark Cooper with Top Knox Fishing. We got the homie William out here and right now we're catching bait for a catfish slash striper trip. We're at one of the, the dams here in Knoxville. You can see it up there. It's super low flow right now so there's only one generator going and it's like right there. And basically what we're doing is I've got the Tarovo on spot lock right on the edge of this current seam right here. So here's the main shot of current out here. And then the seams right here and i've got the trolling motor us just sitting right on it so basically the ticket so far today has been this foley spoon right there it's just the mid-sized one and then i've actually had to have a heavier weight to get on the bottom so that's a three quarter ounce trolling seeker and that's been the the key factor there is the weight to get it down because these skipjack are down close to the bottom right now because there's not enough uh, not a ton of current and they're kind of inactive but we basically figured out the pattern to give them a bite um we loading up down there what we're going to be doing today after we finish catching bait is some bumping in this current here while there's low flow and then once it really kicks up, we're gonna go downstream and fish some submerged trees and about 60 feet of water for flatheads. Uh, that would be the main goal for today's trip. But you know, we'll smack a couple big blues in the meantime and you never know, stripers eat cut bait so we may get one of them fellers. So stay tuned. Thanks for uh, watching this episode, learning something. We're gonna catch some big fish. All right, so I'm gonna keep y'all running while we're catching bait. I've been beating Mr. William up over here with this spoon, so we'll see if it continues. It's like two to one. Mmm, it's about ten to one. It's not. Because <laughs> I've caught seven. That wouldn't bite you. Yeet! Bad math. Bad maths. Well, I do sell cell phone, and you are nuclear engineer, so I sure as heck hope well, you're better at all that. order of magnitude. Yours better. Better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. Real reason to use a foley spoon. Foley spoon gang. Look at that. Oh, he came off. Oof. There's just a little one though. Just a little one. Basically, I'm throwing it out slightly upstream in the current. It's going to hit the water, and I'm going to keep a tight line on it while it sinks to the bottom so I can feel when it hits. And we're using 10 pound braid here so we can feel everything. Boom, we're on the bottom. Now I'm just gonna steady retrieval, retrieval, retrieve the reel. And then boom, we're on. That's when the ticket, keep it right close to the bottom. Not a super fast speed, but right near the bottom in the one shot of current we have out here. And we've just been wearing them out. Hey, he's coming at me. And this is a slower reel I have here too. So that's helping me out a little bit too. Good job on the retrieval on that one. The retrieval. Oh, come on. Ooh, he missed one. Come back. Come back. Did I straighten the hook? You could have. I may have straightened the hook out. All right. Can I go three for three? Tree for tree. They could just, bam, dang, about ripped it out of my hand. I don't know how he didn't get hooked. Yeah, I had that on a couple. I don't know. It took us about 30 minutes to figure out exactly what we needed to do. When they're pushing heavy flow, they will sit like right on the current seam. But this is minor flow right now. It's like 6,000 CFS, and this dam can push 29. So, we've got something on. William's gonna mess around and accidentally hook a paddlefish up here. 
I'm gonna skip Jack Rod, and then we're gonna have to fight it for 30 minutes. Ooh, it came off. Yeah, he jumped it. That looks like a good one. Nah, he wasn't way too much bigger. Depth and speed, guys. That's what we started out with. We started out with faster speeds to see how active they were. We only caught one or two. So we slowed down, let it sink, and then boom, there it is. Now when they get more active, sometimes you gotta speed up, keep it closer to the surface, but they're not super duper active right now. I also think it was kind of weird. When we were going fast, it was the flies that got there. Yeah. Not the spoon. Now that we're slowed down and in them more, yeah. the spoon is getting back to going slow. Yeah. Oh man. Oh. My sinker got tangled up. You miss another one? Ugh. Yeah, we're pretty much hitting them every cast now. If your jigs don't get messed up or your spoon, my spoon got tangled on that throw. We'll catch a couple more and then that'll be enough of the bait catching. This should help you out getting some bait. And remember, don't catch like 200 of these things and not use them. This is a finite resource. There's not a million of them. Uh, that everyone can catch all the time. So just catch what you're gonna use, about 10 or so for a couple trips. And then uh, after that, man, I keep missing them. Leave them in the water. Cause we want everybody to be able to catch bait. I wanna be able to show you guys how to catch it and stuff like that. But I also know that you gotta take care of the resource. So try to do that. I know most people may not listen to me, but hopefully a few of you will. I mean, biggest argument for me, fresh bait does so much better. Correct. Don't yeah. go freeze a bunch of bait because it's going to be inferior. If you can spend the time, go get good fresh bait. Get fresh. It does so much better. Fresh, man, I keep missing them because I'm talking, not paying attention. But yeah, fresh bait, if you can get it day of, far, far, far superior to frozen. And even bait you caught a couple days in advance. It's just, it bleeds better. There's the oils and the, the slime on the outside is fresher catch them immediately on ice don't let them sit out you gotta take care of that bait any of the big catfish tournament anglers striper guys will tell you that bait is one of the most important things and you've got to be anal retentive about it there we go you guys have seen when we're striper fishing if one falls on the deck of the boat i don't keep it i don't put it in the bait tank it's just gonna die and it's not gonna swim right man this guy's coming at me Either that or I lost them. Nope. I've been pretty bad about coming out of this today. I don't know why. I think it's just something to do with the way the current's oriented. Yeah. But we'll catch you in a little bit once we're fishing for big fish. All right, guys, so we caught the bait at the dam, as you saw. We did two or three bumping runs in the current line at the dam, but there just wasn't enough flow to justify staying up there, and there were way too many people. We just couldn't, we couldn't fish how we wanted to. So what we've done here, we fished some shallow water up there, which was 10 to 13 feet, and there weren't many fish other than smaller ones super active. So we've moved down a little bit deeper. Where we're at right now is an outside channel bend. You can see how it cuts right here. And there's about 28 feet of water behind us to 26. And then right here, there's a, a shelf that comes out and then it drops off to our left and then drops off back behind there. We're gonna try it on top of this shelf right now to see if there's any active fish. I marked some rock piles and a couple of stumps and stuff like that on top of that shelf. And we did get some catfish marks on top of it, but Again, don't run around just looking at the net finder for fish. You want to test the activity levels because you could be marking stuff all day and it not even be a catfish one or they're not active at that depth too. So we started up shallow. We're at a mid depth right now. Next spot we fish is going to be about 60 feet deep, but we're going to wait until they kick some more current up for that. Um, but we got eight rods spread out, all fresh skipjack, all varying sizes. And we're fishing about 22, 23 feet of water. And now I'll show you on the topo map kind of the structure we're fishing. Okay, so this right here is the topography you're fishing. 
it's a little bar that comes out like this and then drops off into some deeper water out here and out here. When these fish become active out of these two pools, they're gonna use this thing right here as a way to become active. And I'm positioned right here. I've got baits right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, right there, all the way around it. We're anchored up, so we're covering the top of this shoal, basically. See if we can pick off any active fish. If there's not any active fish, we're gonna move deeper. But we're gonna see if we can get some here. Can't say I've missed this. A wonderful smell of fresh cut jack. So the secret to get a bite when it's slow is to eat a zebra cake. That's what we're fishing down there guys. These are all paddle fish or a lot of them, but there's a tree down there and 60 feet of water. You can see it right there. And uh, we're gonna catch this big flathead. It ain't me. Next. Hey, this is Brian. Sorry, I can't get the phone right now. But if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you. Uh, we'll get another report for the flow in like five minutes. That's a whole bait down there. You want him? That is a whole skipjack. No, it's your your go. Okay. I would slowly get up. You don't want to change the amount of pressure on that line. You just let it go. Oh man. Dang. Sad. Come on, fold over. That's gotta be a flathead. Come on, go, go. There's a reel on him. Did you put it down? Yeah, I did. Golly, why are they keep doing that? No, he's still there. He is? Yeah, slowly real. He's carrying it off to the left. There's one. I'm moving to real. Just put a little tension on it, see what happens. He's still there? No. That one carried that bait all the way up all here, the, the big. Now. Yeah. Gosh. There's so many pilefish below us, it thinks it's 27 feet deep. He's on that. Move! Move, move! Got it. I'm a pretty good takedown. We're sitting here snacking. There we go. We're sitting here eating people. Got some nice little takedown. 
blue cat probably that current's going to pick up as it gets darker guys so the, we're going to catch more fish as it gets closer to dark so sorry but stay tuned i'll use as much light as i can so you can see it but it's going to be the best conditions for a big fish uh because all the current's going oh we got we may have a double here we have a double yep oh we put it down another fish over here on number three we're at number three number three yeah Oh, we put it down. Oh, man, we got some activity period. Little blue cap. Nice, a good start. Yeah, he hooked good. When you're using these 100 pound leaders, guys, you can just grab it and pull them in when they're this size. They don't need a net or anything. Just reach down, grab the leader, and flip them in. There you go. And again, we had to bump down all the way downstream, fishing deeper and deeper water until we finally found them. And they're out here in the deepest water possible right now. What happened was they dropped the current, or they almost totally shut it off, so it made the water level drop. And uh, these guys, the fish in general, just shot to the deep water, set musical chairs. It does it even in trout water when you're striper fishing. They'll just go to the deep. There we go. That's an blue ugly cat. blue cat. Look at all those weird colors. <laughs> that is the ugliest blue cat I've ever seen. Look at his face. Yeah, look at the warts on him. Ugly. Bye. Throw him back. <laughs> He's fun though, wasn't he? Yeah, well, good little fight. Not crazy. <laughs> and we didn't dump our, our crackers and cheese and meat. I mean, if it had been peel and drag out of there, that you know I would have been, been flying. <laughs> <laughs> but... I kind of had a feeling it wasn't the biggest. All right, well, we'll keep at it. Maybe not. <laughs> hey. There we go, guys. That was a good take down. It's coming at me. I don't know what's going on here. It was kind of a weird takedown. Yeah. He, like, swam upstream with it and then off to the right. I don't know. I think he's on that one. Is he? Maybe. I don't think so. Because he's not continuing to make a mess, but who knows? Yeah, I think he is. That was a real good takedown, though. It was. Pretty evening out on here. Burkader words. <laughs> Just gotta keep moving until you find the fish. Start shallow, then go deep gradually if they're up shallow they're easy to catch because they're active if they down deep sometimes you just gotta sit on them yeah little blue cat a big big guy will come around here in a little bit as soon as that current reaches us down here i bet we can pop a couple big ones That's a fun size blue. Man, he's fat. My fish is prettier than yours. Yeah. I wonder if that's a big female pre-spawn. That was me. Chunky fish, pretty guy, girl. It's got some black spots on it. Look at the, down there. Down on the belly? Yeah, on the fin. Oh, on the fin? You see it? Yeah, there's like a leech or something, or some type of parasite there. But... Oh, yummy. Yeah, I mean. See, bud. Alrighty, let's get us another one. 
Wild animals have lots of parasites. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I, Whoa. I'm going. Bro. Whoa. What the heck? <laughs> that was a good real dump. Whoa. I bet this is a snag paddlefish. I don't think so. What in the heck? I guess I'm feeling so weird, guys. I'm gonna. This fish just dumped like 50, 60 yards of line. I hope that's a big giant flathead. Bro. You can see every time it kicks. Yeah. Those are like head shakes right there. I don't have a back anchor down. That's good. Okay. Uh, you tell me what we want to do for. going around these rods because I assume probably to the left is going to be easier. Okay. Do you want to make that move? Yeah, make it. Okay. okay. Make it happen quickly. We're not in a rush. It's a very good fish. Oh, stay on there. This is that one reel that the drag's all weird on too. It's always Guys, the one. This is a good fish. This is a good fish. Very good fish, hopefully. Whoa. This thing just peeled mine. Alright, here it goes again. There it goes again. There he goes again. He's still going. He's just holding. Yeah. You tell me if you need what you need. Make a little headway. You got some pretty good heat to him. Decent amount. I don't want to get it too much. I don't know how good that hooks in. I agree. But man, did you see that runny to it? I did. That was incredible. Oh my goodness. This fish is peeling. This is a good fish. Just the slow drag really yeah. has me somewhat confused. You don't want to horse these fish, guys. You just want to keep the rod bent, slowly bring them in. Look how big those head shakes are. I know. He's pulling the hole back into the boat around. The, uh,. He's fighting kind of weird. Yeah. I think he's a big flathead. Think so? Yeah. Oh my gosh, my back is hurting. Hmm. Also, because I did squats today. Hmm. <laughs> Man. He's still just holding down there, too. Yeah. Trying to make oh, sure to big flathead. Holy cow! <laughs> Monster flathead! Oh my goodness! I think I had that on video pretty good. Oh my gosh! Look at that flathead! Holy crap! William, we got him! <laughs> There's the monster we came for, guys! Holy, ooh, <laughs> bro! What a flathead! Yeah! <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so hyped. Whoa! <laughs> yes! I gotta work in the morning. I don't care. Look at that thing. Dude. What a toad, dude. 
just what a tow, guys. Top Knox fishing, baby. That is a monster flathead. Oh. Oh. My bicep is just like burning. That drag he took was, that first <laughs> run was like, I thought it was a striper. All right, I'm going to pause this. Okay. All right, we're recording. I'm watching the rest. I'm watching the others. If anything happens, I'll let you know. Oh, what a hook set. I got him good. Yeah, I was kind of worried about the hook set, the way he took it, but... Look at that. Look at just that. Just fish. Barely well. <laughs> in there. Barely in there, guys. That's why you don't horse him. If I would have given him too much heat, he would have ripped that out. Oh, it's actually pretty good, but... I need the bunks. You knocked your ice over. And that's only the... And that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. All right, pull the hook, and then uh, we'll get a measurement and oh. some pictures. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, look how fat well, this thing is. We'll see once we put him on the scale. You put you put any photo of that fish online and people will say it was 50. Like, just the width of the head. I got this. Okay. He got a big old chunk. Real down. Kick? Real down on him. You sure it's a dink? Yes. <laughs> you got him hooked though. Yeah, I got him hooked. But... We got this. Uh, we got this forty-something pound flathead in the boat, <laughs> right there. Smoke this guy into the boat real quick. William fighting. Not on the number two. Uh, I think we just dragging. And William fighting this guy in. This reel needs to retire. That whole setup needs to retire. Oh, another flathead! <laughs> hey, Macarena! Double flathead. <laughs> we gonna give him a little size comparison, though. <laughs> Look at that bait in his mouth. <laughs> he choked it. <laughs> What? I mean, that's the perfect size bait for him. He's like, you dang right, I'm going to eat all of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got the 40 pounder down there I just reeled in. <laughs> now I got the buffet fish. Look at that fish, guys. And William's got his up here. Guys. All right, guys, I'm going to let William hold this big giant flathead. I'm going to be the cameraman. We're going to release him. 43 pounds, roughly. Something like that. Look at that fish. What a monster. Look at that. <laughs> Whoa. That was a powerful, powerful fish, guys. There we go. Beautiful. That sounded like a rod. No, we're good. Okay. Move him around a little bit. Oh, he's just vibing. Yeah, you see them gills working. Look at his fins just holding in the current. Look at that beautiful fish, guys. Look at that. There's my hand how big that guy is. Look at that fish. That's incredible. Come out here and do this, guys. Catch and release if you're going to come do it. we got to keep our fisheries in good order, take care of them, so we can have this opportunity and let other people have it as well. It's a finite resource. It's not unlimited. You have to take care of it. And this is how you do it. Catch and release. Look at him. Look at that beautiful fish. Look at that fish. You'll have to turn when I'm not holding up. 
you listen to that power. That's how they suck those baits in. It's just a vacuum. <laughs> Gone. Five-gallon bucket of water just rushing through their mouth instantly as soon as they open it. There he goes. Look at that monster flathead. Hmm. Look at that fish. Beautiful. Just powered down. What do you think about that? Dude, that was awesome. I don't... It's weird having them clamp onto the hand like that. That's awesome. That sound was cool. Well, I got work in the morning, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, you're gonna, if you'll power off. Even the little ones are pretty. Flatheads are my favorite. Flatheads are incredible. Look at the color. Push him down, he'll go. He gone. Yeah. Awesome. Very nice. All right. Well, what's up, guys? We had a great night fishing. Caught some nice flatheads, some blue cats. Had a good time. And now we at the Pizza Hut. Because we hungry. <laughs> what, seven hours, six, six hours on the water? Not bad. We yeah. caught a, one big giant paddlefish on accident. And then we caught a bunch of blue cats, a bunch of skipjack. Had a good time. And that big old flathead. So Don't forget... The little Pequito flathead, too. <laughs> little baby. <laughs> well, hope you guys enjoyed this episode on Top Knox Fishing. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll get some more stuff out to y'all. Peace.